Hello, everybody. Nice to meet you. My name is Sergey Baranov. I'm Setcore Developer and Technology MVP at Dreamit, Belarus. I hope all of you already have experience with Sitecore Customer Data Platform. This is a new marketer-focused solution that is a big step forward in Sitecore's move to software as a service modeling. And today I want to show you how to set up Facebook advertising for your website and how to use advantages of Sitecore CDP to make your advertising more flexible and save you money. This is my agenda. First, I will show you how to add Facebook integration to your website by using Facebook Pixel. Then we will review some actual problems that Facebook AdWords uh, has at this moment. I will tell you how this problem can be easily solved by using Sitecore CDP. Next, I will show you how to configure Sitecore CDP to pass website events to Facebook. And also, I will tell you and how to configure some advanced parameters for better users and event matching and explain you how it works inside of Facebook advertising. And of course, I will be glad to answer your questions in the end of my presentation. Okay, let's start. Okay, what is Facebook Pixel? For Facebook, it's of course a very complex data tracking and analytical system that collect all data and events from your customers. As for developers, it's just a small piece of code that you can insert in your website and lets you track all website events, collect all data, measure, optimize and build audience for your advertising campaigns. Some words about how it works. And when someone visits your website or any other channel like mobile application or something else and takes any action, for example, click add to cart or buying something, a Facebook pixel is triggered and reports the section. In this way, you will now, when a customer took an action after seeing your Facebook ad, and you will also be able to reach this customer again by using custom audience. And when more and more conversions happen on your website, Facebook gets better at delivering your ads to people who are most likely to take certain actions. And this is called conversion optimization. If you have access to your website code, you can add a Facebook pixel yourself. You just need simply place this small snippet of JavaScript uh, in your page layout and then add some standard events like page view or add to cart in any place that you want to trigger some event. And that's all. Sorry. And that's all. Now Facebook tracks your website events and associates them with visitor Facebook account. And let me show you how it works in real solution. Yeah, we have a demo website. As I said, all that you need is Pass this small snippet of JavaScript code. It's your pixel ID. And when you, for example, view page or add to cart events sent to Facebook, you can use very helpful extension for browsers named Facebook Pixel Helper. And here you can see events that are pushed from your website to Facebook. with all information that you send from 
front end. But how to be sure that uh, your website events hit Facebook successfully? Let me show first of all how to set up Facebook. It's very easy to install a new instance of Facebook Pixel. All that you need is go to your Facebook account and create a new connection with web resource. And you can create this one, check web, and just to connect. And you will see a new pixel created. It has a pixel ID that should be the same as the new snippet of code that I showed before. And it's also the same pixel ID that you can see in helper. Yeah, to be sure that you even successfully trigger Facebook, you can use a test event tool. Navigate to your website. Trigger some events. And as you can see, the immediately appears in Facebook and it's easy to debug. Okay, clear activity. As you can see, it's very easy to set up, but there are some troubles that you can face it by using uh, Facebook Pixel with browsers. Uh, of course, the biggest problem is ad blockers. It's a big problem for your advertising campaigns. Uh, let me show what happens if you have any ad blockers in your browser. I stop this especially for this website, but if I enable, you can see that my events not comes to Facebook. And let's see some statistics. Globally, as you see, about 43% of internet users use ad blockers. Uh, here you can see, for example, also global statistic uh, for age groups and gender. And so if you e commerce, for example, mainly aimed to young persons, uh, you can have a big problem and you can lost almost half of your important data and of course wasting money on ineffective advertising. But that is not all bad news. Let me show you one more. I think many of you already face it with this innovation. You know, this year, Facebook has announced a change with iOS 14 and higher versions that will impact how we receive and process conversion events from tools like Facebook Pixel. If iOS detects any tracking activity or advertising user is asked to allow these actions and of course if user disallows tracking activity our business lost all data and all conversion events for this user and how do you think how many people click allow if you see this pop up on ios devices let's go to statistics again it's also worldwide statistics as you can see about 15, 20% of users only allows to track their data though. And so we lose uh, informations about 80% of our iOS audience. And if to sum up, we lose more than a half of our important data and of course we lose our money. And how to deal with this problem? 
And this is exactly the place where Sitecore CDP comes in. And how Sitecore CDP can help us in this situation? I hope all of you know what is Sitecore CDP and how it works. But just in a few words, Sitecore CDP can track and store all your visitors' information, all visitors' interactions and activity across all channels like website, mobile application, email campaigns, etc. Uh, and of course, problem with blockers is not new. And all that we need to do is just uh, to add server-side request that comes to Facebook. In, uh, in this option, uh, we can bypass any blockers. And Facebook, of course, provides a corresponding tool for this. And this tool is known as Conversion API. Uh, but let's imagine uh, uh, what we do uh, if we don't have Sitecore CDP. We have to engage backend developers to implement server-side communication with Facebook and to also provide API endpoints for front-end developers. Front-end developers have to implement communication with backend API and so and so. But this is a real solution and many companies uh, choose this option uh, to solve problem with blockers. But let me show how this problem can be easily solved you know, by using Sitecore CDP. Uh, let me first of all introduce my demo solution, how it was looking before integration with Sitecore CDP. Uh, we have an order cloud account when, where we store all our product catalogs, customers, and orders. And we use these products for our Sitecore website for rendering and for some actions. And we also use these products on our Facebook for advertising. And as you can see, we have only one communication channel with Facebook, and it's our browser. And problem with ad blockers, of course, we can broke this communication channel. But if we integrate Sitecore CDP, we have the next situation. Uh, first of all, uh, after integrating with Sitecore CDP, uh, all our visitor interactions are tracked to CDP. And for example, if website visitor uh, click a to cart button, browser push even to Facebook, and additionally push a to cart even to CDP. Uh, this communication with tracking data cannot be blocked because it's internal integration. And all that we need to do is only to forward this event uh, from CDP to Facebook. And because of CDP sent server side request, it's also impossible to block this communication channel. But we can face it to one situation that our events are duplicated. One event can come from browser and the second one comes from Sitecore CDP. But we can help Facebook to identify this type of events and match them and remove duplication. Okay, now let me show how to implement this inside of Sitecore CDP. And full integration, how it is. Uh, first of all, we need to go to our pixel settings and enable conversion API. Uh, to do this, we just need to generate a new access token and save it. Inside Core CDP, first of all, we need to create a new connection to Facebook. Uh, this is a destination connection.
it has no identification because we have access token and how it look like. So post request, as you can see, this is our pixel ID and this is our access token. A little bit more time out. Also, it's very helpful tool for testing events. Uh, Facebook has internal Graph API Explorer. You can pass the access token. Okay. I want just to show you how to test the connection. As you can see, test is successful. We have a response when Facebook receive one event. If we navigate to our testing dashboard, we can see this event. And it means that connection works fine. Uh, one more note. I don't use placeholder substitution like this one. Because uh, when we use a destination connection and we want to use uh, this connection in our webhooks, this substitution doesn't work. It looks like a bug in CDP, but just for your information. So I, uh, I already have connection for my demo. It's look exactly the same. Okay, next we need to create a full stack experience. Yeah, our case is a catch some types of our events, for example, view page event, add to cart event, purchase event, and just forward this event to our new created connection to Facebook. Let me show you my triggered, triggered experience that I already have. I just explain how it works. And first of all, when you create a new connection, When you create a new experience, you can choose triggered experience. Okay. You must choose one of the exist existing connection. In our case, it's Brimit Facebook. Then, uh, as you can see, it's pointed to our Facebook, and this uh, in this place in free marker you can uh, set up a re request, and it will push to Facebook. 
you, you can't don't use any decision models if you are familiar with free marker syntaxes you can do all the things right here let me show you example from my blog post how you can use just uh, free marker syntaxes to push in your events if you not familiar with free marker syntaxes just a tip free marker is a adobe tool it's not only related to sitecore cdp it's very famous tool you can see you can find all of examples of all of patterns on an official website so with a lot of examples so it's just a tip if you want to know more about free marker you can the official documentation but as for me a free marker is not so comfortable place if you especially if you have some complex logic and the second case if for example you events have some bad data a request to facebook will be triggered anyway you can't avoid of hitting facebook but if you use any decision models beside of your experience you can prevent triggering facebook Okay, let's come back to our experience. Okay, let me show how to use decision models. If you want to use it, of course. And I also show you some tips that can be useful mm, all that we need okay so first of all uh, when we create a trigger experience we need to set up a trigger what kind of events uh, we need to process uh, for our demo we create a custom events and catch only at view and check out events that come from our website Uh, these events pass to our decision model the name of this model is entity so you can just for example click entity uh, to see logs while execution it's very useful for debugging this is sorry if maybe it's not visible it's a standard format of facebook events and we just just check our events and populate needed field for facebook that we want and our the output as an output we have this model that's named fb event and when we come back to our webhook we can easily retrieve as this fb event model for our programmable decision model and pass this data to facebook but one note when we use decision model we had to we had to return any offer because if we don't return any offer our webhook will not hit to facebook so in this case for example we can just check that we have any event id 
in our model and choose a new offer for return. And if not, just skip any action. And let me show you how it works. Okay, let me enable and disable a blocker. Okay, and when we hit to cart, for example, as you can see, one event comes to Sidecore CDP, and the second one comes to Facebook. We can check. In our experience dashboard set our event was successfully. We can also see logs and in logs you can find uh, first of all logs from our decision model that can be very helpful especially while troubleshooting. And of course We will see the same events in the Facebook account. And as you can see, uh, browser and server events are matching uh, how it works. Let me come back. And to my website and Okay, for example, when user click add to cart button, we send one event to Sitecore CDP and the second one to Facebook. Uh, to avoid duplicating of events, we need to pass equal event ID to both requests for Sitecore CDP. We pass Facebook event ID with something unique value. And the same value we pass in Facebook in event ID parameter. And Facebook, you see that events matching work and event duplication also works successfully that we pass event ID from both pixel and conversation. And we also pass external ID is unique identifier of our user on website. And Facebook successfully match all these events and use for data mining only uh, merged events. 
browser event uses a default if server event house has some extended parameters this parameter is uh, added to browser event that's not all just a minute And I think you are interested in how Facebook understand what is my Facebook account. When our website is loaded, uh, Facebook pixel script ask Facebook about some tracking data and store a cookie value that is named FPB is a fingerprint of uh, your visitor device of your visitor browser and Facebook each time generates unique uh, fingerprint of visitor and if for example if users uh, if i don't have right now any active sessions in facebook uh, my fingerprint will be tracked in facebook as anonymous and in future when i log in to facebook and use the same browser uh, facebook understand that all of data in the past that uh, were anonymous related to my account and immediately identify all of these events and match it to my account so uh, as you can see data successfully comes to facebook you even can see that some events are targeted to advertising how to set up advertise i will not explain it's mainly questions to marketers but i can just show how it's look like First of all, you can set up advertising for your custom audience that only related to your website. You don't need to create advertising, for example, if user is from Germany and has age in range from 20 to 30 and something like this. It's not very smart advertising. But if you use your custom audience for advertising, you can make your advertising more targeting you can easily create rules that you want to use what kind of segments what kind of audience should see what kind of advertisers and you can also for example see preview how customers who are more likely to buy this product how this advertise looks like in facebook feed And I think that's all. If you have any questions, and I think you have, I'm glad to ask. <laughs> I'm glad to answer. Uh, you can follow me in Slack, Twitter, or Stack Exchange. And if you're interested in Sidecore customer data platform, I suggest you to visit my blog, where, where I have a lot of articles related to Sidecore CDP. Thank you for your attention. Any questions? I cannot block, block request to Sitecore CDP. 
If you mean a request from website to set core CDP, of course not, because it's uh, it's not advertising. It's just set core CDP. First of all, works this way that your website will push information to set core CDP. If it can be blocked, there is no way to use set core CDP at all. Of course, it's not blocking because it's not any kind of advertising. Any other questions? Okay, thank you guys. If you have any questions, you can easily put me in touch in Slack channel, for example, and I will be glad to ask any questions if you have. Thank you.